Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are repurposing this jar. Now I absolutely love the shape of it. This is just, it's an, a jar from some alcohol. I, I don't even remember which one, honestly, but I, I absolutely love the shape. And I thought that we can make something fairly cool out of this, I think. Instead of just throwing it away, why not, right? So I just got some, it's acrylic paint, but it's got a pearlescent kind of shine to it. And I've got it in black and then we're going to add some purple to this and we're just going to do kind of a Halloween-y kind of thing. Now, when I was cleaning off the jar, you can see the words that are on there. Those are actually like embossed into the jar itself. So I could not get them off. So I can't do anything clear. I've got to kind of do something to where I can hide the lettering as much as possible. And for intents and purposes for this, we are going to make sure that this is the back of the piece just so that if you can see through it, because I want to make this light up. So I don't want to go in full force with the paint and make it completely opaque. I want it to be opaque, but I still want it to be transparent enough that we can see the light coming through. So all I did was I took the little spongy brush thing that I've got here and I am dabbing it on leaving it texturized. I want that texture in there. I added the black first, then I'm going in with the purple. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not rinsing it out. You can clearly see that I want to kind of transition the black into the purple. So it's kind of just like fading into one another. So I'm not going to be precious about it as far as the coloring goes, which is why I'm not necessarily worried about rinsing out this sponge you can see it kind of, it, it fades in. Now, what I want to do is I want to, obviously it's Halloween, so I want to do kind of a Halloween-y type vase. And I thought, all right, well, I've got these wooden cutouts, so let me use one and just kind of get the basic shape of the pumpkin. And then what we're going to do is I outlined it and I am just going to take some E6000 glue and I've got these big kind of chunky glass pieces in orange and green and we're gonna glue these babies onto it now they it's glass so obviously you've got to be careful right but these pretty much they're, they're very chunky they don't have a lot of sharp edges now there are some pieces that are very thin that could they cut absolutely it is glass but I am being kind of careful as to where and how those pieces lay in to make sure that they are kind of, if I use the pieces like that, they're not going to be in a spot where it's going to cut anybody. And then it's just a matter of taking the orange and filling in all the spots that I can until we have the basic shape. And I, you know, I was trying to be oh so careful and, and very precious about how I was putting them on here for this part. And then I, I, I stopped and I just started just kind of dumping them on and kind of filling it out and then moving around the ones that I needed to just because it's taking forever. And even though the E6000 does say it takes 24 hours to fully cure, it doesn't stay like, it, it starts to dry pretty fast. So you, you gotta work kind of fast. Could I use another glue? Absolutely. But I, I didn't, this is what I wanted to use, so this is what I used. Now, could you use something else to fill this in? Absolutely, you could use the kind of like that metallic glitter glass stuff that you can get. You can use whatever. You could even do a spray paint and use it frosted, kind of like where the pumpkin shape is. Just have a frosted painted look over there as opposed to the color. Kind of like a peekaboo almost, but you don't obviously want to see straight through, so you don't want it clear. There's many, many different ways that you can go about doing this. Um, you could use gloss varnish and I've used mica powders. You could do glitter. You could do a hundred different ways with this. It doesn't have to be glass. It can be honestly, whatever you have just laying around. All right. So I have these little cutout mirror pieces and I purchased them like forever and a year ago. And I 
had an idea back then when I initially purchased it, and then, you know, it flew from my brain, as many things seem to do. So I wanted to use it, so I thought, okay, let's try it on here, and, and we'll, we'll just see. So we're going to put a couple of these on. Now, with these, I'm just going to glue them on with the Elmer's glue. I could very easily continue to use the E6000, but I don't know. I figured we're just going to play with different glues today, I guess. And I'm just kind of spreading it out with my silicone tool just to make sure that it's everywhere that it needs to be so that it's completely glued down. And I'm just using it so I don't get finger smudges all over it to kind of push it into place. And we're just going to glue these babies down. And then while they dry, we're going to do something for the sides. Now, the back of the piece, I'm not so worried about if it was something that, say, you're putting on a table, like that, like, say, your dining room table or whatever, then obviously you'd probably want to put something on the back or maybe even the pumpkin that isn't going to be see-through where those letterings are if you had a bottle like this one is. But in my brain, I'm not doing anything with the back. It'll be on the table up against the wall, so I'm not going to necessarily fool with the back. I do have these little skeleton wooden cutouts that I used last year, but I got a bunch of them. So I thought, okay, let's kind of, let's color these with this grayish metallic paint or marker that I have. And then we're going to do some glow in the dark UV resin for the eyes, nose, and teeth, just to kind of add a little bit of something to it. These guys, we're going to glue onto the side after we're done. Now, I'm also going to add some black rhinestones. Now these rhinestones are not like the straight black. They're the black that have like the color kind of shimmer to it. I thought would just add just a little bit of uh, extra something to them to make them, you know, just different. And then we'll glue those to the sides. Now I am putting them on some of my resin tape and this is just so that essentially it's like a bezel that we're working with, right? And we're just going to kind of fill it in and let it cure and then go ahead and get some diamond glaze and get those rhinestones on there. Now, as I go through this, I am only going to use two different colors and this is that Light Wish UV resin. That's the glow in the dark that I'm using. And I'm just doing it in orange and yellow because I thought it would be fine with it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. The blues and the green are very, very light, and I didn't want to use those with this dark purple and black background. The orange and yellow are very bright colors. They're very, like, they are very colorful, kind of, you can see it. So I thought that they would kind of be better. I didn't want to go purple because we've already got purple, right? So I just wanted something different to give some more interest. So as I go through this, I'm going to bounce off. I will be back when we are ready to start assembling this thing. Trick or treat to life, dancing in the moonlight. Goblins on the street, moving to the beat. Candy on repeat, spooky hands and feet. in the air flying everywhere pumpkin spooky glare chills in the midnight air That costume proud.
crowd, hear the werewolves howl. Join the monster crowd, make that costume proud. Okay, I'm back. So, as these kind of dry and do their thing, I decided that I want this to be a jack-o'-lantern, and I had kind of played with different ideas on exactly how to get the face on him. And I, I could have painted it, and I don't know, hindsight, maybe I should have. It may have worked a little bit better. So I decided on just using a black Sharpie marker and just kind of drawing it in the best that I can. Now, if you've ever tried to draw slash color on glass chunks that are just kind of in there, it's not easy. And you're not going to get all of the pieces like 100% covered with the black. Not this way anyway. It's kind of like one of those, I want to say like a mosaic piece, where if you look at it up close, you can't necessarily see it. But if you look at it far away, like on your screen now, you can see the shape and the actual face on him better, if that makes sense. If I had done it with paint, it may have worked a little bit better. I don't know. But... All in all, I think it's pretty cool as it stands. Now I'm just taking E6000 and I'm putting these skeleton faces 
onto this bottle and I, I'm just kind of making it so that they're like one stacked right on top of the other because of the way that the bottle is shaped I can't go much higher than this with these to get them glued down flat and then I'm gonna do the other two now I'm not gonna lie doing it the way that I'm doing it now all at one time was a slight chore because where the glue yes it dries fairly fast it's still a kind of liquidy substance and these things just kept moving every time that I moved the bottle to make sure that they are straight the other side started falling and eventually I do get smart here in a minute and I just take some painters tape and kind of put it around the sides but first I decided that I want two more pieces of the mirror on here and I want to kind of go on the sides kind of in a catty corner type way just because why not? I, I don't know. I just thought it would kind of go along with the shape a little bit better and add some more to it. And yeah, that's what we're going to do for here. So after this, and then I realized that my, my skeletons keep moving and shifting and falling and just all the things, then I get smart. I'm going to do the painter's tape and then we're going to just go ahead and move on to the next step. Yeah. See, they just, I, I yeah. So I, I did, I did fight with this and struggled just a little bit, but it's fine. It, it, it all got done in the end and it turned out a hundred percent a okay. So we're good. Did decide that I didn't have quite enough glue on the air. So let me add just a little bit more just to make sure that I've got enough on here that this guy isn't going anywhere. Well, he's not going to go anywhere after he dries anyway, until he dries, he's going to keep slip sliding around but it's fine. It'll be fine. And then as I was kind of fooling with this, I decided that I need something on the neck of the bottle. So I was looking around and I have a, it's a spider web with a spider on it. It's like a, a table runner that's laced that I used in some pieces last year and using it again this year. So I thought that could be kind of cool just dress it up just a little bit so it's not quite so plain. So we're just going to take a little bit of it, take a little bit of the E6000 and just add it around the top part of the bottle. And then I'm just going to take my dotting tool or not my dotting tool, my silicone tool so that I don't have to get it all over my fingers and just kind of smooth it around the top of the lace just so it holds in place. This is going to be fine. It, it's so light. It's not going to go anywhere like the skeletons were. It, it'll be fine. And once I get it around to the back, snip it off, and then that's it. This part is done. Now it's just about adding the lights and just the final finishing touches for this, which is pretty much, honestly, at this point, just the lights. And then we add our flowers to it. I have got some Halloween-type flower deals that I just picked up from the dollar store last year just to use in whatever, you know, that I may need. So that's all I'm doing in here. I figured the multicolor lights would be a good add as opposed to white. We're going to go with the color. And once again, I will be using my Sharpie marker to kind of go over the white box, you know, the battery pack, and then take some E6000 glue glue it onto the back so that it is secure. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the skeletons. And I'm going to tape that baby into place until it is dry so I don't have to worry about it falling off or anything stupid like that. And then that's it. After it's all said and done, I am going to add the flowers carefully because we don't wanna you know, screw up the wires and the lights and stuff. And you can't add too much. It is a very narrow kind of thing. But I'm gonna throw my flowers in there and we're done. And I think all in all, I mean, it's a simple project. It's using a lot of stuff that I had. Like I didn't go out and buy anything special for this. I just used stuff that I already had. And, you know, it it turned out pretty cute, I think. So you can do, you don't have, always have to go out and buy, you know, oh, what this person used to make this or that or whatever. Use the stuff you have, make it your own, do, you know, you do you. And I, I think that it, it'll be cool. Anyway, that is pretty much a wrap on this one, guys. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you on Thursday in the next one. Love ya. Bye.
Titans all rise from sleep Bones will rattle in the night Underneath the pale moonlight Oh.